This is a reading from chapter 9 uh, of Luke 28 verses 28 to 36. That's called the Transfiguration. Now about eight days after this had been said, he took with him Peter and John and James and went up the mountain to pray. As he prayed, the aspect of his face was changed and his clothing became brilliant as lightning. Suddenly, there were two men there talking to him. They were Moses and Elijah, appearing in glory, and they were speaking of his passing, which he was to accomplish in glory in Jerusalem. Peter and his companions were heavy with sleep, but they kept awake and saw his glory and the two men standing with him. As they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is wonderful for us to be here, so let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what he was saying. As he spoke, a cloud came over and covered them with shadow. And when they went into the cloud, the disciples were afraid. And a voice came from the cloud saying, This is my son, the chosen one. Listen to him. And after the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. The disciples kept silent and at that time told no one what they had seen. Gosh, I, I could feel with Peter and, um, and being on that mountain with the Lord and seeing that aspect of the transfiguration just unfolding in front of him. Mm. And, mm. Um, and not want to feel that you could do something and provide a, a place for them to stay. Yeah, yeah at the moment I'm uh, reading some work of a guy called uh, Alfred North Whitehead yeah. and uh, he, uh, he came up with a whole scheme in his book mm -hmm. uh, to deal with um, our experience, yeah, yeah. you know, so that we could know the whole world through our experience. This is what his scheme was to do. Yeah. And I suppose the passage reminded me of the experience that the disciples were having, and also yeah. possibly Jesus as well. Yeah. But the difference with North Whitehead's um, scheme was that he believed that um, as we think, mm. we live. So this is kind of a, like a, a temporal thing, you know, up yeah. here. But actually, God was speaking to us uh, through the words of the Bible yeah. with his eminence, you know, yeah. his complete infiniteness. You know, we don't need to think about God yeah. to, to make God exist. Yeah. And I suppose the Bible reading reminded me that uh, the yeah. power of God, yeah. the way that it surrounded and experienced God, yeah. is something beyond, yeah. you know, what we would, what we would normally experience. Yeah. Something that North Whitehead didn't mm. uh, didn't account for. Yeah. yeah. So at the moment, I um, recently went through watching my sister have her first child, and um, I've never ever seen something like that in real life happen. Mm. And so that for me was like an experience in itself, just seeing the receiving of life coming into yeah. the world, and. Um, and I was dead into it because the women in that room were saying, men can't handle this, can't see the birth of the, um, a child. And I sat there and went, right, I'm staying right here, I'm going to watch this. Yeah, yeah. And it just unfolded in front of me and it was just a wonderful experience. And um, I was taken back for, I'm still taken back now nice. at this child coming into the world. and. Being a part of it, like I was scared of holding the child because mm. we might cry and I might make everything all fall apart. We might mm. drop the baby, but I've been playing with the child and talking. And the child's been trying to talk back to me, and I'm sitting there going, "Wow, this is so awesome!" Yeah, yeah, and and I suppose Peter was going, "What's happening here?" And all these questions were developing, and yeah, this would be in the presence of something so beautiful. Yes, I've had that experience myself, Johnny, yeah, yeah with my own children, but uh, I remember, um, you know, looking into the eyes of my own children, my own child, and yeah. when they were first born, and being really, really moved by that, you know, yeah. that God was there in the child's eyes somehow. Yeah. 
It's a remarkable experience, you know. Yeah. It really was. Yeah. And, and that looks with you forever, you know, that experience. Yes. And this weekend we're receiving him into the church and through the sacrament baptism. And then there's another step all together. And we, we all come together, like family and friends and with the parents. Mm. And this child is the centre of it all. Yeah. Mm. And just decide. Um, the crowd's saying, this is my son, listen to him. And it's like the focus is on the Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. Yes, those moments are really touching and inspirational, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. 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 fantastic, yeah. life-giving yeah. uh, things that we, we never seem to, you know, get away from. They're always with yeah. us somehow. Yeah. It's remarkable. Yeah. Mm. I'm sure the disciples were touched, yeah. you know, from the same way yeah. of this transfigured yeah. kind of... Coming um, down that mountain. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and hurrying around and the, and the <laughs> thinking there, yeah, I'll get three tents together and we'll get it all sorted and we'll, we'll, have, we'll be all okay, you know, that, that kind of thinking human temporal world and, yeah. and that sort of thing. And God just wanted them to be. You know, God yeah. wanted them to experience mm. His, you know, His greatness, His yeah. infiniteness. His, yeah. Enveloped like this. Oh. In a way, we were kind of transformed by this reading, but also transformed in our own lives through the experiences we've had. For sure, yeah. And I felt that this, that child, so gentle, and yet um, you can't help but feel the joy in it.